Good morning and evening and afternoon, good night. I said good morning, Steven. Good morning or maybe even afternoon or nighttime out there. Maybe it's a little bit of sleepy slap time. Today's video is sponsored by something that I could not recommend to you guys more. And this is gonna be the Opera GX browser. The Opera GX browser is the world's first browser tailored specifically to you gamers out there via a lot of different features. The GX Corner is built to the demand of you gamers to let you know when the newest titles are coming out as well as free games for you to try out. But on top of that, it also has both Twitch and Discord integration that you can just get at the click of a button while you're browsing the internet. And you can also never miss your favorite streamers ever again. You'll know when they're live based on this nice little facet here. So that's gonna be amazing for you. You can also use that to check me out. Make sure you never miss me when I'm live on Twitch. But in addition to that, there is also the GX control feature. This is amazing. It allows you to control three different facets of your computer while using the Opera GX browser. The first one is the network limiter. This way you can control how much bandwidth you are utilizing through your browser. So you're never lagged out in your video games by having too many tabs open and too many things going on that you lose attention to in your browser. You can set that there. And then in addition to that, you can also set the RAM limiter as well. Make sure that you never are using too much RAM. Use just enough that you want during your browsing and gaming multitasking needs. And finally, the CPU limiter is there as well guys all those advanced features it even has the ability for you to customize the theme so you get just the right look what's appealing to your eyes while you're using the browser you can even go in as far as adjusting the saturation hue and lightness so everything looks exactly the way you want it to when you're using this browser and it's even available on mobile so you guys can get your hands on the browser and try it out i'll have a link down in the description do go check it out and let me know what your favorite thing about the browser was thank you once again to opera gx for sponsoring our content all right we're going over today what everyone's always asked me okay i've made my top 10 worst my top 10 power seven whatever it is so people have been like well if it's not here and it's not there then where is it and this is going to be obviously my opinion you can have one of those on the internet that's crazy but this is where we're going to place all these characters today and this is going to be based on um if you had access to every character in the game where would you rate them within each other now as you all know if you skip this my fault and if you see someone down there saying i can't believe you did that thing and i'm talking about it right now and they didn't understand that this is every character in the game can be used to beat everything okay but if you're going to compare one character to another character one's going to be better in some ways than the others one's going to be a little bit more flexible one's going to be maybe a little bit more free to play one's going to do all this other stuff but we're going to take this as this if you had the choice between all characters in Genshin Impact, who would you want to pick? And as always, you enjoy your time here, smiling faces as well. Be part of the family, man. Hit that sub button, add the D to the sub, so it's subscribe, duh. I'll thank you for it. So let's start in here. We're gonna have SSSS, which is gonna be like, better than everything that anyone else can do in their role for the most part, whether it's support, shields, healing, single target damage, AOE damage, mix of the both of them. That's where SSSSS goes. It means that you're the best possible person in your role in general. All right. Then we have S, which is like you're just under that. You you might be almost as good as what I define as the best, but you just fell right under there. So you're still S tier. And I'm I'm already ready to see it. Well, well, Yomia is the only Pyro Bow character in the game, so she should be triple S, right? Sorry, Amber. All right, so let's just keep that in mind here. Most of the characters you're gonna see, you're gonna fall towards the top of the bracket. And I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of flack for anyone who falls below B tier, or even in B tier, or heaven forbid they're an A tier. So let's get into it here. Now, the first one here is gonna be the Traveler. Now the Traveler has a lot of cool things that they can do here. The animal one, in my opinion, is the worst one. The Geo one, you know, I'd put in like B-ish tier. I do like the Electro one though, for a couple of reasons, has Electro resist down. It also batteries like crazy, especially if we get their constellation at like C4, right? Or they get to battery like an absolute legend. If you don't have Raiden Shogun, and you want to have some crazy battery character, Electro Traveler with the Sacrificial Sword. Oh, that's a monster because it's three shots. It means three chances to reset. And that's a ton of energy, especially if you get that constellation four for free. So I'm going to put them specifically as a battery in like the A minus tier. If we could do A minus, that's why I'd put them at as the Electro Traveler there. Now, Albedo here is a master of their craft, right? This is like English Traveler, right? We have Traveler, English Traveler, and then we have like Canadian, right? We have Aether, English Aether, and then Canadian Aether. Now, Albedo, incredibly flexible character. 
goes in a lot of teams is Geo, so he fits that times two Geo resonance, has a little mastery bonus, has a ton of off the field damage. It's gonna probably get even better in the future when we get new Geo stuff with, you know, Ito and Goro coming out. So I'm gonna put him as right now on his own S tier. He is S tier for sure. He kind of fits everywhere, but you don't necessarily need him for anything, but he goes anywhere you really want him to go, which is gonna be amazing here. Now, Amber, sadly, um, we know you can do cool stuff with Amber, but if I had to pick any character to use in a team, uh, it would not be Amber. All right, so we're gonna put her in the defining D tier, uh, sad tier. This is the Dear Diary, uh, please buff me tier. All right, Dear Diary tier. Ayaka, a lot of Ayaka fans. When I made that top seven power characters, like why isn't she in there? Why isn't she in there? Now I put her in like S, you could also like make like an S plus tier category where they're just below triple S. I put her right there. She's a fantastic character. I use her, I love her. Her unlawed burst does a ton of damage. It's a magnificent time to be alive when you play that character. And this is not even factoring like, yeah, you can sprint over water, fantastic stuff there. That's where I will put that character and that's where she stands here. Now let's move on, let's jump over. Let's let's uh, do El uh, Albedo, Bennett, <laughs> Bennett, Bennett, Bennett. Where does Bennett go? You've already seen it. Bennett is Triple S is one of the power seven that I dubbed the seven characters that are better than everything. If you want to use a healer, well, the first character you look to is Bennett. Bennett's a master. Huge healing, the fastest rate AOE heal in the game for a huge amount. You don't have to build them that much for HP. Gives a giant attack buff, can be used as a damage dealer if you want to. You can even put him in the good old Thundering Fury set to just absolutely spam your E and destroy shields inside of your own Elemental Burst to just absolutely destroy abyss shields from like lectors and stuff in in the abyss it's a he's a wild character he does everything in the game that you want him to do and it's not that hard to gear him up to do it which is why he's up there he's a master of his craft absolutely crazy now the second best healer in the game that i would put up there is diona for similar reasons this is because as well there's a lot of powerful team compositions if you go to like abyss dot whatever the, the thing that gives you all the stats for the most used characters in the abyss it's a uh, bennett because he goes pretty much everywhere. He's number one's first pick healer for 99% of the team comps in the game. And then you have Diona as well. People use her for times two cryo res. Even if you're doing like a physical Eula party, you can use Eula Diona. Everything's gonna be cryo 99% of the time. So you're gonna get 15% crit rate from there. She's used in the good old Morgana team. She's freeze team supreme everywhere. If you get constellation six on her, 200 elemental mastery. She's a wild character. She has really strong shields as well. And she also has attack down, speed up, shields, heals, uh elemental mastery bonus just some other things as well she just does a whole bunch of stuff if you want a dragon strike you can use her as your speed buffer or drag she just does oh, so many things she's a fantastic character oh she also can wear like the different bow sacrificial bow pavonius bow to energy battery the crap out of your party way too good we often very overlooked by a lot of these other uh, five star healers in genshin impact now chong yun my guy so chong yun is an interesting one now chong yun might get better in the future uh we don't have toma yet so chong yun could become like a little bit of a a powerhouse you know eight tier ish character he is using one of the best teams in genshin right now which is the national team it's the best free-to-play team and also just one of the best teams available but chong yun as a whole outside of that really isn't that crazy but he's not gonna hit c i'll put him in b ish tier just for the fact that He's in the national team and he has the ability to possibly get better in the future. Um, he's just like a cool guy, right? He's eating popsicles all day, all night. Just a fantastic character all around there. Now we have Ganyu, who obviously power seven. You want huge AOE damage, even at Constellation Zero. Fantastic character, does a bajillion damage, has a lot of nice weapon options from like the prototype Crescent to if you have the ammo spell. A lot of those bows out there are just magnificent for her, and she just does huge AoE damage for like very little effort. You might find her playstyle at C0 very lackluster and very boring, which you know might not be a reason for you to uh want to play this character. So that could be a reason that you want to be like, wow, she should be at D tier. And honestly, if you hate that playstyle, put her down there with Amber, right? Oh no. Don't make that don't make that comparison uh but no she's a very powerful character you just have to enjoy her play style but we're not play style lovers here for this tier list this is power level and she's up there for sure so let's do another one like why is this character not in triple s rated tier now eula is a very strong character however i will not rate her in triple s tier i would put her in s tier 
for sure. She's a fantastic character. I have her at Constellation 6. She hits like a monster dump truck with her Elmona Burst, although she hits way too hard because nothing has that HP. Uh, but she hits like an absolute monster truck, and she is good. If I was to maybe like, who's the best physical carry? Eula. That's because there's like two of them. There's Eula and like Razor, right? So, uh, but she's a fantastic character, S tier for sure. And uh, she's just a monster of a powerhouse, uh, but she's not as much of a monster of powerhouse as some of the other characters in my opinion obviously so we're gonna put her in s tier for right now and uh she can be a little awkward to play if you don't have uh one of her constellations that uh helps you maintain her e at four second cooldown so that's a thing there to think about on top of that another s tier character shingling i got a lot of questions between shingling this pyro polearm character another one shingling is a fantastic character uh one of the best teams in the game with national team also has like the child national team out there which is fantastic there's a lot of cool plays you can do with her and uh, it's kind of been funny to watch Xing Ling sort of gameplay style change from like crescent pike where do a whole bunch of damage as a physical, physical carry to uh I, I give peppers to people i'm a support to now like i'm gonna do an absolute monster truck of damage and she does but that's kind of where she's gonna lie there is because she is good she's a fantastic character but i think that if you're looking at aoe or single target Ganyu is going to be better in AoE, and then obviously Hu Tao is a monster truck in single target damage as well. If I did not put it out, I might have put out another uh, Hu Tao video uh, recently, either just before this one or it's going to be right after this one. Um, go take a look at that. I mean, 40k, like the N1C, if you know what that is, the normal attack into charge attack combo, which is just as simple as holding down left click and then jumping afterwards or dashing uh, in the right team composition. Uh, you can do like 40k normal attack into like over 100 120k charge attack and that's taking like maybe one second to do that so you're just spamming out 160 160 160 160 thousand damage with that combo and it's just an amazing amount of damage uh to to just take place i mean even gone you can't do that much damage in single target against one target but c3 hu tao is, is dumpster trucking my c6 gani with a seat with a with an r4 amos bow by the way and i got like a r1 homa and i'm just dumpster trucking single target damage and even cleaving two people with hu tao she's an absolute monster of a character then that's not even talking about what she can do with her element of burst so keep that in mind there as well another polearm character where was he i got asked a lot how do you feel about shao shao or zhao zhao s tier easy all right these are not in order in s tier like i'm not saying diona is better than zhao but zhao is just a monster truck dude he just hits super hard he is very harder he's harder to sort of uh boost his damage because he is animo there's only a couple ways to do that in the game and it's like constellations uh on five star characters which keeps him really from like being sss here if he had more support right if he had more ways to lower animal resist with artifacts or maybe weapons or just characters naturally he'd definitely be way up here that's the one thing holding him back from being like top tier of the tippity top tier is there's very few ways to lower resistance for enemies and if you have him he might be triple s for you but since those are all constellation locked five star things then Zhao here is going to be in the old s tier as well here another s tier candidate is going to be none other than child aka tartaglia fantastic character with the fireworks team electro charge team whatever you want to call it taser squad massively um sort of like underrated by the community uh and i think that's because his play style is so restrictive to just like electro charge spam right and uh people just don't like use his e right they are like i can stay in this for 30 seconds and they're like wow it's a 36 second cooldown what a bad character he gets a lot of flack for that but he is an incredibly powerful character and he does deserve to be up there in the tiers of the s now another s tier character very easy to do here raiden shogun very nice support character giving elemental burst damage right just passively on her e you see that in a lot of team compositions there's a raiden shogun national team to buff up shangling for the same reason there's a raw power electro geo squad there's a lot of stuff you can do with raiden shogun very powerful battery gets a lot of flack but she still is a pretty powerful character in the right hands there and she's if anything she's held back by the electro element which i do believe is why you'll see absolutely zero electro characters in triple s tier here and someone left the video because like but official so official speaking of electro characters she is also s tier she's still a monster character for kind of like the same reason that uh good old xing ling was is that xing ling has the national team whereas the electro charged right swirl spam team is uh pretty much what official is known for the taser squad with her ascension where every time you do an electro related reaction 
you're just sending thunderbolts down from the sky doing a bunch of damage over and over and over and she has still stood the test of time for that reason i see you looming go back up there in a tier the same character okay so that's a fantastic uh, reason to keep her there as well here so let's do a little bit more of an awkward one here so shinyan uh, notably was absent from my top 10 worst uh characters video and uh like i said in my other video it's because i forgot she existed and i'm put her in c tier all right so she's going right into c tier where she belong all right now i do a lot of cool stuff with shinyan a lot of people are gonna hate me because i put shinyan down there also isn't it a little weird that like shinyan and amber like they kind of meet they like voltron each other there that's a little strange maybe maybe it's you know Am that's dude amber's meant to be in d and she's meant to be in c they're out there doing a gundam wing thing but yeah shinyan is just uh, she just doesn't do a whole lot she's got some cool physical down physical damage up stuff but her being pyro it's so hard to put her in a superconduct team because she's sending people flying there's a whole there's a whole shindig there okay a whole shindig of stuff now another c tier character i'm gonna throw her in there since we're here right now lisa is coming in yeah you gotta have a couple cool things where she can superconduct in lower defense at the same time but really that's just for the big damage screenshots with like eula elemental bursts and stuff it's just you can make it work you can do cool stuff with it but at the end of the day you can find a much better character in genshin impact than uh than lisa as well so uh moving on another triple s tier character Zhongli here two flexible Zhongli. you can put him anywhere has 20 percent physical and resistance for element shred down giant barrier does good damage with his elemental burst every 12 seconds has petrification and that's just his c0 form there so just a crazy 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 a uh, flexible character the fact that you can just put him anywhere is what keeps him up there in the triple s tier and since we're on this go anywhere sort of triple s tier sort of thing we're gonna also throw in good old venti on top of that we're also going to hit two birds with one stone in kazuha as well so this is the six of the power sevens like to call them and venti here in kazuha they have a little bit of overlap their animal characters both very good with the viridus and venra set can both have very good em based builds there for the swirl damage swirl spam their elemental and a bursts do a lot of good swirl venti has a little bit more swirl applications than kazuha does venti's elemental and a burst has harder crowd control than kazuha's does um so venti has more crowd control he also has energy gain for your party which may or may not you know be a, a powerful thing in the team that you're running there so that's two things to think about crowd control awesome energy regain awesome kazuha has uh damage up and a little bit less crowd control so if you need people in the air and you need the energy regain venti if you need the damage up you value that a little bit of damage bump that 30 40 percent or damage bump for most kazuha players there as well as a little bit of crowd control and you don't want your enemies yeeted up into the air kazuha is there as well so, which is why they're both up in there a lot of people miss that i actually had kazuha in triple s tier in my like top seven best power seven video so that's up there for you guys to think about um on top of this we also have some other characters to talk about so let's throw in um a couple s tier characters here and how i feels about them so we're gonna have uh, the lovely dovely where are they beto fantastic character part of the good old official child electro charge spam team very 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 powerful character in genshin impact especially for constellation 2 the damage that you can do with this character is quite magnificent mona here has been the backbone of many teams for a long time in genshin damage up bonus freeze teams all uh, vaporize her own stuff for a huge amount of damage you can do so many things with mona that she's just been applicable since the start and still is so she's still out here hanging out with everybody here the luke is still a fantastic character uh for single target damage aoe damage with the big old phoenix bird but you know good old hu tao is still uh, the reigning champ on that uh big single target damage can even cleave and has an elemental burst that is also aoe uh you could get in there with shang ling except you know shang ling four star character easier to do the luke five star character uh maybe a little bit harder to work with less teams you know between the two so these are both s tier in that uh, sort of circumstance there now let's do some of these other characters down here uh let's throw in um xing cho the final power seven character xing cho just the master of his craft damage reduction minor healing and then just is uh so powerful with pretty much any pyro character in genshin impact whether it's hu tao the luke xingling yomia right yanfei just any pyro character that wants to do damage Kali even you know get him in there I don't actually know if he works super well because he yeah yeah he, he can work with Glee. uh get him in there and just do a whole bunch of pyro related reactions he's just such an enabler and he also can do damage himself which is just it's just absurd if you get some constellations in him build him for damage so let's rate some extra characters here uh let's throw in good old sucrose at a 
not as good as the triple s here you maybe can even throw her in an s if you have max constellation if you're c6 sucrose s you know what c6 sucrose s c0 sucrose a and uh she just actually can work in that electro charge team as well in either constellation c0 or six so i'm gonna rate her s tier as well animal characters that just have proc control damage bonus um it's just it's just so magnificent also she gives elemental mastery to people it's just a fantastic thing to utilize in your team very powerful character as well here so some other s slash a characters here we're gonna put in kaching here now kaching i'm gonna throw down in the a tier category here and this is because she suffers from a lot of things uh much like uh good old Raiden shogun suffers from being electro without abusing certain things like fischl does and beidou does just having super high multipliers that are just repeated over and over and over and over uh kaching suffers from high cost on her normal attack it likes to fling enemies away from them if they're not like the big sort of enemies like uh, the mini bosses or like used to be the samurai guys and she likes to take a giant step back and it has a high energy cost gain there so she suffers from mainly that thing that really holds her back from uh, competing with some of the higher damage dealing characters now can you still beat everything like we said at the start of the video of course you can beat everything with any of these characters you can do it with amber it doesn't mean that they're going to be better than the other characters right mathematically show so yes still good but i'm gonna put her down in a tier as well i'm also gonna throw down a razor here in a you could argue that if you have like all the good equipment in the game and all the superconduct stuff and all this master of your craft stuff you could argue that he could be up there in s2 especially if you have a lot of his constellations with his defense break he's got a lot of attack speed you can just kind of shred through things but he just doesn't have that giant crazy burst damage like someone like eula does and so it feels kind of like cheating to rate him the same as eula when they're both known to be physical damage dealers no physical damage dealer should be up here with eula because she's just that fantastic here so let's couple with some other characters here ning Wong. i have a hard time with ning Wong. i haven't used her in a long time I don't know if I should put her in S or A, S or A, S or A. I think I'm going to leave her in A, uh, especially if you're C0. And if you have C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, her single target burst damage can be absolutely insane, especially with times 2 Geo Resonance between Zongli or Albedo. So you could uh, argue that you could put her in like S, S minus, something like that. Um, but I'm going to leave her up in the A class right now. She still is a, a very powerful single target burst character, has some nice a utilization a very high multiplier on her e geo damage up can block some projectiles right but we haven't seen a lot of need for that uh at all so that's uh just gonna be ning Wong in there now let's do some other uh characters here now yomia is a pretty powerful character but i'm gonna throw her in the a class here now she has some things that she suffers from not really as a character design thing but more of like a gameplay design thing uh auto attacks or archers can be inaccurate at like decent mid mid ranges to long ranges especially uh, she attacks very fast so one of her best possible partners Xing Cho, isn't as good as he could be because she attacks so fast that she attacks faster than the internal cooldown her vaporize can be proc so she misses damage out there so she's gonna you know be under characters like Deluc and uh Xing Ling and definitely Hu Tao in the vast majority of circumstances for a lot of characters and players out there in Genshin Impact also gonna throw Klee up here for the same thing uh, right in the A tier class which is a fantastic place to be but where are you gonna be there if you're not in the A tier class where are you gonna be now let's throw some other characters up here uh B A B A B A so let's throw a uh, Rosaria in A a uh, Rosaria fine okay physical damage dealer but she's not really here as the damage dealer she's here as uh the sort of cryo applicator that a lot of people who use Rosara use her as and she's very powerful at doing it especially if you have C's 2 to uh sort of buff up the duration of your elemental burst she gives crit rate to your fellow teammates as well as uh, applies cryo in a pretty uh significant fashion also sort of the same thing with Kea who has sort of kind of fallen out of uh recent play but uh was very prominent for a long time and I think people just got tired of playing with these two characters uh in the permanent freeze team compositions I think those fell out of prominence more so for like the good old uh Ganyu permanent freeze Morgana style teams however you can still replicate the whole Ganyu freeze uh, Morgana thing with like Kea or Rosaria in your team if you don't have access to Ganyu and you want to run some sort of a mono permanent freeze team I've seen uh you know good old memes Sayu infinite uh shatter squads running around which is another thing so Sayu where would I put her Sayu 
I'm gonna have to rate at B tier. Uh, she's like a healer, but can wear a VRS and Venator set, but also can like do damage. She's like Bennett that instead of attack buffing does damage on her own, but is Animo. There's already so many good Animo characters, Sucrose, Venti, Kazuha, uh, Jean as well. Uh, then I'm gonna put, have to put Sayu at B because I'm gonna put Jean in A, because if you need an animal character that also needs to heal, that uh, really fits your team composition, you're gonna use Jean over Sayu, like 100% of the time. You're gonna use Jean over Sayu because she's gonna have the cleanse, she's gonna have uh, the Viridus and Venner set applications on her on her E, and if you're in the abyss, you can eat dudes up in the air. That giant dopamine hit when you see the 80K hit, and you're like, yes, I did it, I did it, and it's fun. So Jean's up in the A tier as well i'm also going to throw yanfei up here uh, i have her right around the Klee because uh Klee does do more damage when properly played than yanfei can do uh but yanfei is also a four star and so for a four star uh, who's a little bit easier to play but can do approximately around you know 10 20 percent of the damage uh discrepancy between Klee does and Klee has harder to play animation cancel all the things um sort of gameplay experience there also incredibly short range and all the bombs yeah you know c0 both of them they're right around they're within enough damage percent right where i can feel okay saying that one's right around the other one there so uh, i personally like yan fei a little more because she's a four star that can do approximate sort of damage that a five star can do and is a little bit easier to play in my opinion um noel here at c0 dude you're gonna be like c0 noel is like c tier because your 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 healing is rng now you get c1 um, and you actually put investment into your character. You're gonna have high HP, high damage, even at like C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Even without C6, you can do decent stuff. C6 is usually like an extra 1,000 attack. So if you see someone that's a C6 Noel with good gear and they have like, you know, 5,000 attack, if you don't have C6, you'll be at like 4,000 attack, right? Right around there somewhere. So even at, even without C6, she's still fine. Would I rate her higher than this? I don't think I'd rate her higher than this. Maybe if we had like an S plus and an S tier to, to divvy them up between each other, uh, average gear, you might hit like high A to like S. Now, if we had S plus and S, high tier C6, then well, I'd put an S tier pretty easily there. But unless you have her uh, C6, I'd leave her A, A plus. And then if we had like S divided by S plus sort of categories here. I put her like S at C6 with a good build. I mean, if you've seen the channel, 70 something thousand plunge attack damages, uh, 40K just swings, it's wild. Like she swings in her burst, which I have full up time on, harder than my Eula's auto attacks do her normal attacks. Do. And they're both, you know, they're both normal talent 10. And this is just way more damage. So if you have a C6 one, feel free to put her in S without C6, put her in A. And I'm trying to fight against bias here by throwing her in A instead of S. So we're gonna leave her there in S here. Now, uh, Kujo Sara, a lot of questions here. Now, I like Kujo Sara. She's stupid to use sometimes, but even at C0, um, if you've seen the raw burst damage potential of uh, like Kujo Sara plus Bennett, plus some damage percent bonuses like uh, Mona, you can just absolutely do ridiculous amounts of damage with a lot of characters. Um, we've hit like, you know, 6,000 something attack right in Shoguns with, you know, C0, you wouldn't get the crit, but at C6, with crit damage, you're hitting 600,000 right in Shogun Elemental Burst with, you know, 60, 70,000 plus charge attacks. And you just rotate through that stuff over and over and over again. And it's a, a, a very strong, if you get the gameplay loop down character for that reason alone. And more and more Genshin Impact characters are coming out with ways to buff up their own damage, whether it's their own uh, attack, which we've seen probably in the future come out with defense bonuses for characters that go with uh you know elmon burst from defense to attack like noel does or characters who just have lots of ways to bump up their own damage percent like raiden shogun so all these new characters more and more that we'll see that buff up their own damage percent whether it's normal attack charge attack elemental damage elemental burst damage percent we've seen all that stuff the more characters we get like that the more attack buffs um, become better because it's like that teeter-totter the higher attack you have the more damage percent you want the higher damage percent you want the more attack you want so that's something to keep your eye on there uh, is more characters that just give large flat a stats buffs whether it's attack or defense in the future is she broken no does she have her place in the meta like Kea and rosaria does yes for sure and that's why i'm gonna leave her there and this brings us to the last couple ones here so we have barbara chi chi and kokomi i'm gonna kind of pair these once again because these are like on slash off field healers here so we have kokomi that applies hydro right their main role let's get it real clear real quick is to heal your team primarily and foremost now gene a little bit better than these guys but these three 
main roll heal so kokomi does some nice she can do some decent damage just like chi chi and the difference between these two is chi chi has the good old cryo application off the field and kokomi has hydro application off the field barbara does have some hydro application off the field too but you'll be like really close to your enemy there and then they all just kind of like really heal up there now is this super awesome no in my opinion these three characters are in b tier because look at the alternatives if you're trying to make a, a healing team a team with healing in it there's so many other alternatives that are just better in a lot of ways that's why bennett is up here in triple s rated attack buff healing heals twice as fast as any other healer in the game with his with his uh good old aura applies power aura to you so you can get rid of other uh elemental status abilities on you as well diona elemental mastery up with high constellation attack down uh speed up shields healing has great ways to give energy back to the team just a lot of cool stuff and she's cryo element which is fantastic there as well which i love her so much because she's so versatile and viable and does so many things and that's why these three characters you know when you start out with them you're doing damage you're doing healing you have full heals from barbara it all feels super awesome and stuff and then eventually if you get your hands on other characters where you can sort of uh you know, not really gradually but like yeah, i guess graduate to like a good word and to playing more you know sort of unique in in, in intrinsic comps where like every character is trying to push out as much as that character can push out like look at the national squad for instance so you have a character like uh shingling here who's your main damage dealer who do you have for healing you have bennett because he's your attack buffer to snapshot your elemental burst on shingling also is your healer on top of that it can cleanse certain elemental debuffs here you have shing cho as well for damage reduction additional healing at the same time also has the ability to apply hydro so you can vaporize your shingling and then uh, a lot of players like to run Chong Yun as well. So you can start melting for just bonus damage from your main carry here. Everyone's putting out and doing something super big for that team. And that's why these characters are kind of like, uh, I mean, you could do Chi Chi instead of Chong Yun, but that's why they're both in B tier. So, you know, and you also don't need Chi Chi to heal on that team because you already have two characters who are healing. They're putting out the most sort of things that they can do out there. And it's just wild. And also Chong Yun in that team. Uh, applies cryo way faster because it's imbuing shingling's auto attacks with cryo now speaking of cryo last but not least here um we're not doing these three for obvious reasons uh is aloy and aloy to me um you can put her in a i tried her and she's just she's got some problems sort of like with yomia where she has an internal cooldown on how often you can proc her little ice bomblets and she kind of lives and dies on whether or not uh, enemies hit all four of those bomblets before she can do damage she gets all of her cryo damage from there on her normal attacks she goes into her cryo stance and it can just be a pain in the butt and even if you try to use someone like gene to yeet all those bombs at somebody you can only get a stack per 0.1 seconds 0.1 seconds so you just can't even do that so she seems like a pain in the butt for me to play out there and i'm not going to do anyone a, a disservice here of, of rating these uh three characters before they're even out who would do that who would do that at all so let me know what you think about this like i said most of the characters that you see here uh reverse pyramid man there's a lot of good stuff out here and obviously you have the power of seven who just rule the land beyond so commence with the hate down below you know i love to see it make sure you hit that subscribe button add the d as always